Chances are you're taking this course because you've got a brand new AV boom loop uncompressed that you're dying to play with. This is the part where I'm supposed to tell you to resist the urge to touch that sleek new bin loop hardware until you've read the manual word for word and finished this training course. You're supposed to swear to me that you would never, ever, ever consider doing such an irresponsible thing, especially with such a beautiful product. Well, since this is a new course, you and I have a clean slate. So let's be honest. We both know that you cracked the box open the moment it arrived, tossed the packing material in the dumpster, along with the manuals and accessories inside, of course, ripped through the plastic cover like presents on Christmas morning, twisted all the knobs, flipped all the switches, and poked all the buttons. You did, didn't you? I knew it! What were you even thinking? <sighs> well, what's done is done. I suppose the only thing we can do now is take a closer look at the hardware so we can figure out what you broke with your careless acts of savagery. Let's take a peek at the front of the unit. On the left, we have a small status display. Under normal operation, this usually shows the current status of the SMPTE timecode interface. Whether it's reading or generating timecode, the current clock value, and other helpful information. The knob below offers access to a menu system on the display. This allows you to view and configure settings on the unit, such as IP address, groups, video output formats, etc. Along the top of the unit, you can see the reproducer status LEDs. These are RGB LEDs that change colors and flash patterns based on the state of each playback channel. For example, they go solid green when a clip is being played. But wait, there's more. The metal front panel is magnetically attached to the bin loop. If you grab the sides of the panel and give it a little tug, it pops off for easy access to more goodies. For starters, this gives you access to the power switch located here. You can also see the controller card status LEDs and buttons here. The LEDs mostly provide status for the SMPTE timecode interface and GenLock input, while the buttons provide simple control of the timecode interface. With the panel removed, you can access the reproducer test buttons located next to the status LEDs here. Pushing this button causes the playback reproducer to play the lowest numbered video clip on its media drive. Pushing it during playback will cause playback to stop. While this is not useful for normal operation, it is quite handy for troubleshooting or installation since you can use it to verify playback and video output at the touch of a button, hence the name test button. Just below that are slots where you can insert a standard issue multipass, which is required prior to boarding the next space flight to Flossed in Paradise. Okay. So there's a slight possibility that the Alcor McBride team has a cult obsession with the movie Fifth Element. The fact that this product was actually assigned the code name Project Multipass during development probably should have been our first clue that we have a problem, but... Hey, what the... Aziz! Light! Thank you, Aziz. Where were we? Ah, yes. These are actually the SSDs, or Solid State Drives that store the media content for each playback reproducer. To be clear, these drives only store your video content and not the operating system or software required for the product to work. That means these drives can be quickly and easily hot-swapped in the field without breaking the product. This is the rear panel of the bin loop. Here we have a dual redundant auxiliary backup fail-safe power supply. Sorry. I just really wanted to get the whole redundant point across. If a power supply fails, the unit will beep loudly to let you know and chug along gracefully on the remaining power supply. You can then hot swap the replacement power supply module without taking the system down. Here's the Ethernet control connector, which can be used to remotely control the bin loop and save or load configurations. This parallel control port can be used for very simple triggering from I.O. devices like buttons or motion sensors. This is the video sync or GenLock input, which allows the bin loop to lock directly to an external video sync source, like a sync generator or a V16X show controller. This feature is absolutely essential for applications where you need to synchronize multiple bin loops or other synchronized AV devices with one another. This 9-pin female D-sub connector is where you can access the SMPTE timecode input and output. This is linear timecode, or LTC for short, 
So these are balanced signals. Here we have two ports that can be used for RS-232 control. As for video outputs, each reproducer card within the bin loop provides an HDMI and 3G SDI output. Each output can source a 720p, 1080p, or 2K video signal at up to 60 frames per second. Resolutions like 4K or Ultra HD are achieved using Quadlink 3G SDI. I guess that about wraps it up for this lesson. Oh, wait. Looks like we have a question from the class. Yes, you, sir, in the front row with the goofy hair. What was that? It was bad! It, it had nothing, no fire, no energy, no nothing! You know I have a shoulder right here, you know? Mm -hmm. And it must pop, pop, pop! So tomorrow, from 5 to 7, will you please act like you have more than a two-word vocabulary? It must be green, okay? Okay? Uh, okay. I'm leaving! <laughs> Rude. Well, hopefully you're enjoying this class more than that guy. We'll see you in the next lesson.